In this video, I'm going to show you how to DIY this shiplap onto a wall. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Josh. It's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in turn for making this video. The shiplap that I'm going to be installing is five and a quarter inches wide, eight foot long, and about a half inch thick. The paint I'm going to be using is called Tricorn Black. And this paint is much darker, obviously, than the white. So with that being said, I need to make sure I put a coat of paint on it first before I install it. Because if you look into the grooves of the shiplap, if there's expansion and contraction going on, you're going to see the white. If you try to roll it later, then if you hit it with a brush, you're still going to see it because of the expansion and contraction. You still might have a little bit of white shown. So it's very important to put a coat of paint on it first before you install it. After I painted those with the spray gun, I let them dry for 24 hours and then stacked on top of each other and hit the edges because I don't want to be able to see that white streak whenever they're installed on the wall. This is the wall that I'm going to be installing the ship lap on. As you can see, there's an outlet here and then there's another one on the other side of the wall and I got to remove these outlets in order to install the ship lap. So I'm going to take my Klein tester here, plug it in and as you can see, it's lit up so there's power there. So I'm going to go turn it off at the breaker box before I remove this outlet. As you can see, the lights are not lit up on the tester, so we know there's no power to this outlet now after I hit that breaker, so I'm gonna remove this outlet and the other one. I now need to locate each stud inside of this wall. And the easiest way to find the stud without using a stud finder is just take a hammer and tap on the wall until you hear a sound that's solid, then you'll know you're around a stud somewhere. Then we'll take a nail to tap into the drywall just to verify that. Sounds like the studs on this side of this electrical box. So wherever there's electrical box, a common place would be to one side or the other of it. So I'm gonna test it out right here. So right there is the stud, but I wanna make sure I find almost the exact center of the stud because I don't wanna be on the edge of the stud because a stud going up through the wall can definitely bow one way or the other. So if you go up right off the edge and then it veers off one way or the other, you're gonna miss the stud when you're nailing this stuff up the wall. So I'm gonna make sure I'm about perfect center before I put the rest of the layout across the wall. So this one hit right on the edge. And then this hit right on the edge. So I know the center of this stud is about right there. So I'm gonna use this mark to put my layout across the bottom of this wall. Now using the mark that we made where we found the center of the stud, I'm just going to do a 16 on center layout off of that mark in order to find the center of the rest of the studs. Just a quick tip, if you look across the tape measure, each red mark is the 16 on center layout, so that makes it easy, and most houses are framed 16 on center. I'm now gonna come back over here to the initial mark that we made where we found the center of the stud and measure off the corner of the wall over to that mark and transcribe it up by the ceiling. We got 28 inches to that mark, so we're gonna just do that up top. I'm now gonna measure over off of that corner, 28 inches, make a mark, and now I'm gonna double check to make sure there is a stud right there, just in case someone got their layout off when they framed up this wall. And let's see. Awesome, definitely a stud behind there. So I'm gonna use that, and in this case, I'm gonna measure back to 16 on center to go ahead and get this stud marked. So right there. I'm now gonna put that nail back into the wall and I'm gonna use it to hook my tape measure onto to put my 16 on center layout across the rest of the wall. I'm now gonna remove this nail and I'm just gonna tack it into this mark closest to this wall and then we're going to chalk a line straight down from here to the bottom mark using just a simple chalk box like this. I'm now gonna chalk a line from mark to mark 
So that way we'll have a place to where we know we will hit a stud while we're installing the shiplap. Now remove that nail and we're gonna go over to the next one and repeat that process across the whole wall. This part would have been much quicker if I had a helper because I would not have had to use a nail in order to hold the chalk line. I could have had somebody below snapping the chalk line as I held it above. I'm now ready to start installing the shiplap on the wall. Now just a word of advice. You can either start from the ceiling and work down or from the floor and work up. It's really up to the installer. But in my case, I find it easier to start from the ceiling and work down because whenever you have a rip cut across the top of the ceiling, for one, it's more visible, and for two, your ceiling might not be perfectly flat, so it might be just a little wonky going across the top. So I always start at the top with just a straight piece. So since I'm starting at the ceiling, I'm gonna take the edge that does not have the groove in it. The groove goes down in this case. Now if you're starting at the floor and working up, you would flip the groove up, obviously. So we're gonna set this about where it goes here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna double check with my level to make sure we're setting about level. And if not, we need to adjust the shiplap accordingly. So I'm just gonna hold it here and take my level and give it a check. And since this is a new construction house, typically new construction is gonna be more level than old construction. So if you have an older house, you definitely wanna make sure you're gonna start level and not out of level. So if we take a look here, our level is setting perfect. So I know if I use the ceiling as a guide, I'm going to be okay. So now what I got to do, I'm going to slide that chip lap clear to the back and note which line I'm breaking on out the end. I'm now just going to take my pencil and mark onto the stud where I need to cut in order to break on a stud. I'm going to be cutting this shiplap using this miter saw. I highly recommend you use a miter saw because wherever you're going to be butting at on the wall, you want a perfectly straight cut there. And when you're using a circular saw, sometimes they're not so perfect. The nailer that I'm going to be using is a two and a half inch straight finish nailer. And the nails that I'm going to be using is made by Passload. They're 16 gauge and you can use 18 gauge if you want as well. So either one's fine and you can also use a standard hammer and finish nails. It's up to you. Any of the products used in this video can be found in the links in the description below if you need to purchase them. I'm going to start by installing this first piece that we cut just now on the sole tight up against the ceiling. And also if you want, you can actually use adhesive on the back of this as well, but in this case, I don't know if I'm gonna keep this shiplap on here forever, who knows, so I don't wanna put adhesive on it because it's gonna destroy the drywall and make it really hard to finish later. So I'm just gonna install this using the nailer for now. I'm just gonna double check to make sure I'm tight against the wall and it looks good, so I'm just gonna put two nails in each stud using my nailer. And now when you get to the end, we're gonna put two nails in the end into the stud as well. To continue this run up against the ceiling, I just gotta get a measurement from tight against the wall on this side to the end of that board. So I got 75 and three quarter inch heavy. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and then get it installed to finish that run. Now that I got the board cut the length, I'm just going to place it where it belongs and double check to make sure it looks good looks really good everything lines up great so now we just tack it into place now on to the next row so to continue this run if we were to start from that side of the wall we'd have a break here and then we could alternate our breaks down the wall like so but after discussing this with my wife she thought it was best and I agree with her to put a full piece in the middle so we'll have an eight foot piece that's going to go in the middle of the wall and then we're gonna fill in the ends, and then our next break will be coming over and breaking here, and we're gonna continue that pattern down the wall, that way it breaks up the joints more. Just don't ever break your joints on the same stud going down the wall. So I will not break my next joint here on this stud because that's where this joint just broke. You definitely wanna make sure at best you stagger your joints. Because the stud layout is 16 on center, an eight foot piece of shiplap is gonna break from the center of the stud to the end that's gonna break on the center of the stud. So there's no need to try to figure out where to place this. All we gotta do is line it up with our chalk line from either this side or this side. Either way is fine, just as long as you line it up with one of the studs. Now that the ship laps lined up on our stud centers, all I gotta do is make sure we're tight up against this run and that our gap looks really consistent going down the whole run of the ship lap. 
So that looks really good. So I'm just gonna hold it tight and take my straight finish nailer and just tack it right into place. And in order to finish the run, all I gotta do is measure to get the distance between the wall and this end to fill in the rest of the run. And we're just gonna cut and keep running that same pattern until we get to these outlets. And you're gonna notice some white spots on some of these boards. That's because we noticed some imperfections and dents that we touched up with spackling. So we're gonna sand that stuff out later along with the nail holes. When you're installing the ship lap, you're gonna have some that are bowed up or down. So when you run into one like that, like this one for instance, I tack the edges because we got a bow in it like this. So what I'm gonna do is just take a pry bar or some people call these a wonder bar. We're gonna hold it tight right up against the shiplap. And because this drywall is going to need repaired later down the road, if you do take this off, so it doesn't matter if we add little dings in the back of behind the shiplap. So I'm just gonna tack this right into the drywall. So after we tap it into the drywall like so, I'm gonna hold pressure on it and pry up. And as you can see, it pulled the bow right out of it. And while I'm holding tension on it, I'm just gonna tack it into place. And as you can see, that got the bow right out of it. And again, this drywall, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be behind the shiplap, so just continue running your shiplap. Next, I wanna show you how to cut out around an outlet like this. Something very critical to note here, we don't wanna cut the board to go any higher than this hole that's meant for the machine screw that's gonna secure the receptacle to the side of the wall. So I'll show you here in just a minute how this is gonna work. So I'm gonna already take, have a piece cut that's gonna go right here. So I'm just gonna set it right in a place to where it's gonna be installed. And then I'm just gonna take my pencil and then I'm gonna mark the side of the outlet to where we gotta cut out around. And then after that, I'm gonna mark the very bottom of our board to where it's gonna hit on the wall. And I'm gonna measure up to the top to where I want the board to be cut out. So like I said, I want it to not come up much higher than this hole. So I know right where this drywall is, that's where I want it to go to. So if we measure up, I need to go up on the board just about two and seven eighths up from this mark. So I'm gonna transfer this mark two and seven eighths up off this edge and make a square cutout. Here are the two marks I just made. One's on each side of that electrical box. And I'm gonna take a speed square, just hold it right up to those marks. And like I said, two and seven eighths right off that edge. So I'm gonna come up here and scribe a line or mark a line up two and seven eighths. Then come over to this mark and do the same thing. Two and seven eighths, make a mark. And now I know I need to just go straight across right up here. And I'm gonna take the miter saw and cut these two lines out. I'm now gonna take an oscillating tool and plunge cut right down to cut this line out. All right, now we'll go test that out and see how it looks. And that looks really good, nothing wrong with that. The hole that's for the outlet to secure to is right there and we didn't want that cut much higher than that, so that looks really good. And now when we cut this bottom part out, the same thing applies. Don't cut any farther down than right where that drywall is cut. So now for this next piece, we're gonna hold it right up into place, right to where it's gonna be installed. And again, we just mark the edges of our last cut. And now what we gotta do different here is we've gotta mark on the inside of this wood to where this lip's gonna be. So it's gonna be right there. So as you can see, we got a pencil mark. And now we need to drop this down and we need to measure down to where his drywall's cut because it's right at the bottom of that hole for the outlet. And if you measure down, it looks like we got about an inch and a quarter. So now I gotta cut out an inch and a quarter from those marks that we just made. All right, we're gonna go and put this into place, see what it looks like. And as you can see, that was cut out really nice, pretty much perfect. All right, and then we're just gonna anchor it just like all the rest of them. I now gotta install a shiplap around this window on this other room, and I wanna explain something to you. This window jam came placed on this window, but it's not gonna be long enough after the shiplap goes on. If you remember from earlier, the shiplap's a half inch thick, so I have to take these boards off and expand, extend it out after we install a shiplap around it. But I wanna show you an easy trick to remove this window jam. First step is just take a drywall screw and drive it into the wood that's attached to the window. 
And now all we got to do is just take a claw hammer, hook it to that nail, and then pry against it. It's going to start pulling that trim or that jam right off the window. Easy peasy. Now, as you can see, this shiplap is installed around this window. And here's the jam that we removed before. And this is why we remove it. If you take a look, if you put window trim around this, you're gonna have a gap between the window jam and then where the shiplap is. So you'd have to caulk that, it wouldn't look good at all. So what I did, I bought three and a half inch trim. So it's gonna go right up, and this is three quarter wood. It's gonna butt right up to that window like so. And this looks like it's gonna need ripped down just a little bit, but now I have a place to nail my trim and it's not gonna have any caulking that's gonna be required to fill in any type of void. So if you're wondering why I removed that window jam, that's why I did it. Now it's time to address all the nail holes that's in this shiplap. And all you need is just a little putty knife. This is a two inch putty knife, which you don't even need one this big. And then I'm gonna use what's called spackling. And we're just gonna get a little bit of spackling, just enough to push into those nail holes and fill them in all the way. And whenever you swipe off the spackling, you wanna leave just enough that needs just a little bit of sanding left in order to complete the fill. So that way when you paint over it, you're not gonna see those nail holes at all. So first we're just gonna apply the spackling just like so. And now we're gonna let this set up until it totally dries. This stuff here takes about one to five hours to set up all the way. This has been setting for about two hours and this stuff is totally dried. And now what I got is a 120 grit sanding sponge. And I'll put a link to these in the description below if you wanna purchase these. But now all we gotta do is hit them real quick using the sanding sponge. Couple quick swipes and as you can see, those nail holes are covered up and is very smooth and now we're ready to paint the whole wall after we do this process. Now that all the nail holes are patched and sanded, what I'm gonna do now is take my shot vac and shot vac the whole wall. And then after I shot vac it, I'm just going to take a rag and just wipe off the fine dust off the wall. And since this wall is black, that's why it's very prominent where you see all the nail holes. If this was white, you would never even notice all these little splotches. And I touched up some other things along the way when I was patching the nail holes, so that's why there's so many white spots. But again, it looks like a lot, but it's really not as much as it looks since it's a black wall. So let me get this done. I now just got a simple roller on an extension, and this is a half inch nap, I believe. And now this is gonna be perfect for just rolling right over this shiplap, and I got the paint down here on the floor. So let me roll this wall. I wanted a little bit of texture on the paint, that's why I used the half inch nap. If you don't want as much texture, I recommend using a 3 8 inch nap. The shiplap in the bathroom in this wall in the bedroom turned out really good, but if you need to know how to install kitchen cabinets, check out this video, it'll help you out.